Hey, what's going on everybody? I am Ant Pruitt and today we're going to take a look at the new content aware feature from Adobe inside of Adobe After Effects. Hey folks, what's going on? I am Ant Pruitt. I hope you're doing well. I'm unbelievable as always, just doing what I do. And today I'm just going to do yet another tutorial, but this time it's showing off a really slick feature that's really leveraging the power of AI when it comes to creating content. Uh, what I'm talking about is the content aware feel that's built inside of Adobe After Effects now. I previously did a couple videos, okay? First off, the let's talk about content aware feel. I did a Photoshop video um, that talks about that where basically you can manipulate your image and fill in certain areas based on the pixels that are around what you're trying to fill in. It's pretty slick AI that's being used. I have a link to that video right up there. Now we can take that same technology and put it inside of video processing. The difference with video processing is everything is moving around in real time. With the, with the photo, it's a static image, it's set, it's done. With video, you're dealing with stuff that's lighting up and all of that and, and moving around on the screen and, and all of the settings can change. To combat that, you have to go about it a little bit differently. And After Effects does a really good job with this. Now, I previously did another video uh, where we use Premiere Pro to help remove objects inside of whatever footage that you're working with. And it was a little bit more time consuming because there's a lot of different steps, but this is a lot easier inside of After Effects. It, it might take a little time depending on the power of your computer and the footage that you're dealing with and so forth, but it's still a lot faster than doing all the extra layers and stuff like that that I had to do inside of Premiere Pro. If you're still interested in that video, I got a link to that one right up there, okay? So let's go ahead and dive into After Effects and I'll just walk you through getting this squared away. Okay, inside of After Effects now. Before we get started, I wanna make sure you know that there's gonna be a few times where I'll speed through uh, with the magic of video editing. So I'm not holding your eyes and ears hostage inside of this tutorial because depending on your footage and the computer, some things may take a little bit longer to render. I don't want y'all waiting around on that. So every now and then I may speed through some stuff. Okay, all right. Now, back in After Effects here. Uh, this is a piece of, of drone footage that I shot umpteen years ago no big deal um, if I play it through it, you just don't that's it it's drone footage the problem is if I wanted to use this for say stock video or what have you I wanted to remove this logo so it's not visible and I use this same piece of footage inside of my Premiere Pro tutorial but this time I wanted to, to make a difference with it and see how it works um, inside of After Effects okay so let's go ahead and get rid of this little logo here with with using the content aware fill you're going to have to have a couple things in place you're going to need a mask and you're going to have to understand what you're trying to remove whether it's an object or filling in a surface or anything like that or just filling in textures and we'll go through that it's really really simple inside of the content aware fill panel so the first things first i'm going to highlight my video here in the layer panel and then i'm going to go up to my pen tool up at the top and then I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to draw a mask around this object. Now for me, it's a little difficult drawing around this small space. So I'm going to zoom in on my screen just by pressing control plus. And then I can just use my space bar and mouse and move it over to where I can see a little bit better. So I want to get rid of this object. I'm going to just draw a little mask around it like so using the pen tool, something like that not too difficult. The problem is when you create your mask, the default uh, property of it is what they call an add property, as you see down here in your layer panel. So we want to change that and we want to make it say subtract. So that, that way we are punching a hole into our video footage and we're going to tell After Effects to fill in that hole. But sometimes you may want to just leave it as none so you can see a little bit better in the next steps. Take these mass properties and just click the little twirl down option there. 
I recommend giving it a little bit of feather. That way you don't have any type of hard edges on your mask when you look at the final product. So I'd probably take it up to, you know, anywhere between three and three and 10, something like that. All right, so I got a mask there and I got it feathered. The next step, we need to track this actual mask. You know, uh, we're gonna use some motion tracking. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. All right, we're gonna use some motion tracking here and that's very easy to do. You can either hop over to your tracker panel right here on the, on the right hand side or you can just right click on your mask and say track mask and that'll pop that same panel up right there for you. So what you're gonna do is hit this little play button and your video is gonna start moving and you wanna be mindful of your mask and make sure that everywhere the video moves, you want that mask to stay right on the object that you're trying to cover up. So I'm gonna click play. All right, and then when you notice that it starts to get off of the target a little bit, just hit your space bar and pause the tracking. And then you can just take your, your mask and move it where it needs to be. Make sure you have your mask selected there. And when you're doing that, you're basically adjusting these keyframes down here in the bottom. Once you got it squared, just hit play again on your tracker and let it continue forward. And this tracking process can take you know, a few seconds, it could take up to 60 seconds. Just again, depends on your footage and also depends upon the power of your particular computer. All right, so once you have your tracking done, I didn't need to track it any further because now the stuff that I wanted to cover is off of the screen. You can just stop it. I'm actually going to just get rid of those keyframes because I don't need those other keyframes. We'll stop it right there. Let's get rid of those keyframes because they're not necessary. All right, so that's done. Hop back to the beginning of your footage. And now we're going to go back to the mass properties and change that to subtract. This way we're going to basically present a hole for After Effects to work with. So now you go on over to your content aware fill. Uh, panel here. If you don't see your content aware field panel, hop over to your Windows menu and make sure it's checked over here in this list. Okay, so if you notice you have this alpha expansion, I recommend keeping it either at zero or roughly three pixels or so. Uh, that gives you, in my experience, gives you a lot better results as far as smoothing things out and making things look a little more natural. Then you have these fill methods. You got three different field methods. You have object, surface, and edge blend. Object and surface work fairly similar to one another. I would deal with objects more so if it's just sitting stationary on the screen somewhere, like if you're trying to move a, a take a coffee mug off of a table or something like that and just fill it in with the table. That will work really well because it, it's just removing an object. Surfaces, think about, say, removing a logo from the back of a laptop or something like that. Um, but again, it, if it's moving, the surface object, uh, the surface method would work a little bit better on a moving screen. And then this last one, the edge blend. Think of something like a street or a grassy knoll or something like that, and you're trying to remove an object that has all kinds of texture in it that's moving. That edge blend will fill in and help blend in those the, the extra texture around the side to make it look a little more natural. You probably won't use that very often, at least I wouldn't in any of my projects. So I'm going to stick with using surface for right now. And then you just click on the generate fill layer and it's going to start thinking. And what's happening is After Effects is going to put a brand new layer d down here in your layer panel called a fill layer. And it's just sticking a little PNG file in, in, the, in its spot. And it's going to do its analysis. And again, it can depend on your computer and the type of footage. 
Of course, anything higher than HD footage would take a little bit longer. And if you don't have about 16 gigs of RAM, you're really going to struggle here. All right, after the analysis is done, it will do one more little render and you'll see it actually started to fill it in right there on the screen. Okay, the render is now complete. So if I just go ahead and preview this footage, looks pretty good. Object is gone. Now there's a little bit of texture showing up in there. There is a way to fix that, but I won't get into that on this particular example. So we're going to move on to our next example. That's a little more complex. And that's this one here. Now I have my beloved Clemson orange on as usual and my beloved Clemson hat, but let's say I didn't want to show off the Nike logo. So of course, as usual, you need to go in and create a mask because if you play through this footage, I'm not just sitting stationary. I'm moving around and whatnot. And as I'm moving around, the lighting is changing. The angle is changing. This is quite a bit of challenge for After Effects to fix, but it gives you a way to work around that. But first things first, let's go ahead and make our mask. So we'll just highlight our video layer. Click on the mask. Zoom in. And we'll just draw a nice little mask around the logo. Okay, change that back to none for now. And then we'll zoom out. That looks okay there. So now we need to track our mask. So let's right click, track the mask, click play. Slow down, that went a little too fast. Let's zoom in a little more to make sure we're not putting the mask around the, you know, the, the background or anything like that. And I'm stopping that footage by clicking the space bar. And then when I'm done, I go back and click on the track mask play button again. It'll work through. Oh, slow down. So now, you see my mask is cutting off a little too much of the leg of the logo there. So what I can do is just go back in the footage before my head moves. Okay. And then we we'll just step forward instead of clicking the play button over here like that. We'll just click this step forward by one frame at a time. So we'll forward and then we'll make an adjustment like so go forward, make another adjustment for it. Nope. Go back. Make another adjustment. And each time I make an adjustment is creating keyframes, letting us know, um, that this mask is going to move around during the duration of this footage for it again. Uh, that's a little too snug there. So now it's looking pretty good. I'll just hit play and see if it holds on to it. So far, so good. But as I turn my head back, that angle is going to change. All right. So now, whoops, go back too far. So now the angle is changing a little bit. So let's step forward one frame, fix the mask. Actually, I'll go back one more. Looking much better. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop right there just for the sake of time. We'll just trim this video footage down. All right. So now we have all of our keyframes there. Then let's go back and preview it. And hopefully the mask stays fairly tight with that logo. And if we want it to test it, you can just hit subtract on it. And we shouldn't see the logo at all. All right, makes sense. So now let's fill it in. So we'll go back to our uh, content aware fill. We're going to take surface again, generate fill layer. OK, 
okay render is complete and it filled in the logo on the hat there so let's just give it a preview hit play and it looks pretty good it looks better this time than the first time I did it all right but there's one thing of concern this little spot there we can fix little textured areas and, and lighting areas fairly easily so I'm going to get rid of this fill layer I'm just going to disable it for now like that and then I'm going to say I need a reference frame so we'll go back to this content aware and we're going to create a reference frame which will allow us to pretty much patch that area like we are in Photoshop so we'll click that and Photoshop is going to open okay once Photoshop is open you can use your typical um, tools that you would use to fill in an area like this for me I'm going to use the clone stamp and I'll just tell it to clone in this area like so because this way I'm matching up the texture and the lighting a little bit better and just painting it in on the mask okay so that looks pretty good once you have that done you just click save and then you just close Photoshop and it'll take you back to After Effects and it'll give you this little reference frame down here in the bottom and that's what's going to help the the AI figure out what the fill layer should look like so we'll go ahead and generate our fill layer again and it'll think about it and go through and do its analysis and you'll see it start to fill in on this hat and boom it's done well it's not done but it's pretty close okay so now if we preview it it should look pretty good it looks pretty good granted I didn't put the feather on it like I was supposed to but you can do that before I'm not gonna redo that that feather would smooth out the edges around that mask but that's it folks this is really really good and notice it tracks really well all right so that is it that is the content aware fill option inside of adobe after effects i hope that has been helpful for you if you enjoyed this video i appreciate you passing it along and sharing it with others i appreciate you clicking that like button and leaving me a comment and subscribing if this is the type of content that you enjoy all your support is greatly appreciated all right, I'm going to get out of here. It's time for you all to get on up out of here and go outside, do a little bit of creating and dominating, and I will catch y'all on the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.